Welcome to AmiPal, the number one place on the internet for the sweetest Ami content. And this is the 50th episode of AmiPal. Um, I'm just as surprised that I'm making this as you are probably. Um, I never intended to start a YouTube channel in the first place. So I, I'm, I'm glad people are still subscribing, still watching, still liking my videos um, and leaving comments. So please continue to do so because um, I love the Amiga. I love sharing the content with you. Uh, today's episode was going to be um, about the Amiga One XE G4 and I was going to be covering upgrading from the pre-release 4.0 um, to Amiga ROS 4.1 Final Edition, um, but things didn't go quite according to plan. So instead, we're going to look at some puzzle games. Yes, there are more to puzzle games on the Amiga than Lemmings. Um, as great as Lemmings is, and it's still one of the greatest games on the system, on all systems, if you will, um, but there are other puzzle games. Um, there are some that took inspiration from Lemmings, and then there's the more kind of traditional puzzlers um, so we're going to look at four of them today. Uh, so let's get this camera moved in front of the screen and start recording. So here we are in Webench 3.2 and I'm going to start iGame. I don't think I've shown this to you before. Um, iGame is a game launcher. So it's like a catalog of all the games you've got installed via WHD load and through other means. Um, so it, you can kind of create lists of your games that are installed, um, which handily then have a little screenshot on there. Um, I've got a 256 color screen here, so they do show up quite slowly, um, but also with a nice lot of colors. So, you know, it actually looks a bit like the game. Uh, what shall we start with today? Let's start with Trudlers. Hit enter, or you can double click on it with the mouse, or you can even press the fire button, I believe. Bit of interlace there. Let's turn it up for you, good people. Okay, so here we are on the title screen. It sounds like it's hung when you go to the different pieces. Uh, but here you can do basically um, different game modes. Um, I'm just gonna stay with the solo mode, but I think you can do it as, as two player team mode as well, which is pretty cool. But we just press fire to start. Right, so you've got different men to save, different trottlers to save. So here I am at the top, control by the uh, joypad. We've got to get them to the exit, much as you do with lemmings. So, this is where they're gonna come out. There they go. And what I do, I hold down the fire button, and then I can put down blocks, like this. But you'll see on the right hand side with the score that there's only a, a set number of blocks that you can set. And each time I use one, they go away. So this is fine on this level. They give you a, a nice lot of them. But on subsequent levels, it gets a bit meaner. And there you go, they jump through much the same way as Lemmings. I only need to save three, so the music started playing before all of them went through. Um, but there we go, on to the next level. It's a great little game. And you see they've got different themes as well. How to get them here, oh my goodness. That's just so I've got a little platform to sit on. Yay! That's me jumping. The control system works really well, actually. Um, you know, it's it's on the 
on the joystick. So when you hold down the fire button and, and point, that's where your, your block is going to emerge. In these early levels, you've got a nice lot of time to do it in. I mean, it, it does get quite complicated quite quickly. And there is a certain amount of uh it's me trying to work out what to do next there is a certain amount of you know what do i do and you can get rid of them just by pointing at it again so now i've got them all up there i'm going to block that off and we'll do that oh lemons just gives me more points so these ones now on this side are going to start coming through so we'll do that giving me double entries to the level. So there's Troddlers, I, I love this game. Um, I, I really recommend you play it. It's, uh, it's a nice head scratcher and uh, I think you'll benefit from it. This is one where you actually have to throw, take them away to start with. Like that. But they'll find their way out. I won't. <laughs> anyway, let's pop something else on. That's Troddlers. Another thing we can do here is search. So you can just type in the first few characters into the filter up here and it will show you everything in there. So we're all going to have a look at Kiro's Quest. Vision are usually quite a, a strong developer. Um, they had a hand in uh, Roadkill, which is one of my favourite uh, races on the CD32. Okay, so the point with this one is we've got to rescue one person. But where is that person? They're not over here, are they? Because this is me. What we can do is turn these things, these enemies, into ice cubes. Oh. No! Oh, I wanted that one there. Oh. This is a slightly frustrating game. You see what I did there? I just filled that in, which means I can now look at a different screen, which you don't really know is there unless you stumble upon it. Which doesn't really make this game ideal, does it? It's not the most intuitive ones out there. Right, I need another ice cube now. Uh, no, that's the wrong place. <laughs> oh, there I go. Okay, so that now gets shot off onto the other screen and you follow it and it means that it's filled in this gap. So now Thank you! You have no idea how many times I've played this game and I've tried to work out what to do. It, <laughs> it's mad. Okay. So second level, I haven't done this one before.
<laughs> okay. Um, keep that over there. Put that in there. No, I can't do the diagonal. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, puzzler, but one that's not necessarily that intuitive to work out what on earth you need to be doing. Um, one that I think perhaps suffers from not having a manual. You know, I've, I've watched uh, four or five YouTube videos of this game and only one of them worked out what to do. So I will thank that person in the credits. Um, hmm. So, new level, we've got new, new bits. So where does that go? Uh, okay. Anyway, that's Kiro's quest. And now we step away from the joypad slash joystick and move on to the mouse. And we have this lovely little game called Logic. Logical, even. No, we're not playing Turrican 2. But I do expect that theme tune to start. <laughs> You click the mouse and then it takes about a minute for the music to fade out so you're not really sure if you've clicked it or not. So here we are, logical. Not really sure what any of these mean, but we'll just go with the first, <laughs> shall we? Okay, so got different graphic sets that just kind of set the backgrounds, but we'll, we'll leave it on one and make a start. Okay, so this gives you an idea of what the level is gonna be like. Um, you've got a variety of colored gems that roll, colored balls that roll across the top of the screen and then they drop into these here. And then with the right mouse button, you can rotate them. Oh no. And then you, you click the left mouse button to rotate it. So I want a green in there now. We'll fire that yellow down there. We'll put a blue in there. Then I want that there. Let's put the green over there. Pop that down there. <laughs> Okay, so now this has been destroyed, and that's the purpose of the game, basically. We need to destroy each of these by exploding some gems in them. So, once we fill up the greens, that destroys that too. Don't need that anymore. But we need to continue these until we've got the colours we require. Okay. Come on, give me some pink. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe not like that. Oh no! There you go, all four have had explosions in them. And now we've completed the level, and now we move on to the next. Um, it's quite an inter interesting idea you've got. This is the, the, the time limit for your game. But you've also got a time limit up here, up at the top, for where the balls go along.
So it, when on the first few levels, it seems quite easy to be able to destroy each of them. But obviously it becomes more and more complicated the, the longer you go on. And they bounce back too. <laughs> Oh no. So we destroyed the one on the left and we just need to do the rest. It's a good game. Um, obviously you've got the, the time limit factor there. They, they throw in different things like one way um, routes and magnets and things. It gets very complicated, but it's one of those games I think you could probably spend an afternoon just playing through um, and just really, you know, getting your brain going. And it's one that will run on any Amiga as well. So uh, whatever you've got, you can play it. And now my fourth and final game in today's extraordinary um, competition, it's not a competition, comparison, showcase, Gulp. Um, you can see here in, in iGame I've, I've got it in a genre called puzzle and there's loads of other puzzles in here. But we're going to go with Gulp, double click on that to start the WHD load version. Uh, Select your language. There's a happy little fish, or a big fish. Gulp, the fantastic fish rescue mission. This intro is actually quite colourful and nice. Um, nice bit of animation, nice artwork. You can click through it though, which is good. A desperate message beams across the galaxy. The Earth is underwater. Humanity is on the brink of extinction. Oh, so I'd give it 50 years. In a far off underwater world, the message is received. They blast off destination Earth. Mission, save the human race. So space fish then. Now this command center of the spaceship is the menu screen for a variety of things. And how to start the game is probably one of the most complicated I've ever seen. Um, it's obvious when you work it out, it's, it's the traffic lights in the middle, but you've got the variety of things either side here. Music, um, I don't know what this is. Um, saving game or loading game perhaps, uh, and uh, awards. Um, but it's one of those things about old Amiga games is that I think there was a lot of expectation on behalf of the user that they'd know what to do when they saw this screen. Um, it's not immediately apparent all the time and it's become more and more obvious to me the longer I've played these games. So we've got a Lemmings-like game in that you've got a group of cute, cuddly creatures. Not too sure about that. And they've got a variety of moves. So for instance, I've got the walking fish here. He goes up here. Well, that didn't work, did it? Let's try making it a torpedo fish. Boom. Nope, that didn't work either. Maybe I need to make another walking fish. Up you go. And make it an eating fish. Ah, we'll see what that does in here. Do we need to make this a weight? Now for an opening level, this isn't <laughs> that great. I will say that now because Again, it's one of these things where, look, you, you're given all of this here, all of this. I don't know what most of these do. Is that coming back? Oh, look, they're all going up there. Now, where does that come out? You can see them in the radar at the bottom, so we'll start seeing some fish appear somewhere. Unless that's the, oh no. 
Ah, so they all automatically start walking there. But they die if they hit the bottle of poison. Righto. This one's still up here, by the way. For some reason, me pressing that opened up the, uh, the floodgate. At least they're not drowning out here, are they? What's this one do? Oh, interesting. So anybody that touches that springy fish now can jump. Not there. Right, so we press that. Well, that's killing on the fish. That's nice, isn't it? At least they ultimately went down. And we know that this one bites. You see, this is the thing with lemmings. You were given like one, at the start of the game, you were given one thing to do and you knew what would happen as you progress through, the, uh, as you progress through the game. So you were given like 10 lemmings and that's not biting through there. Do I need to sit further off? You were given 10 lemmings and then you were given, brilliant. You were given 10 lemmings and, and 10 of an, an ability um, for a single level. And once you've done that level, ta -da, you complete it, you know. Um, with this, you're, cut, you've, you're given everything, absolutely everything. And I, I don't know if I need to go over here. I don't know what these switches do. No, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a very awful game. I like the artwork. So if I click on that and then click the red mouse, right mouse button, um, that's when it goes down like that and turns other ones in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Again, let's talk about confusion, shall we? But I don't know how I'm gonna complete this level now because I couldn't get them chewing through this, which worked fine earlier on. Anyway, gulp everyone. So I think I picked a good selection there. Um, none of them are particularly similar to the other, but you can see where inspirations have been had. Um, the best of them for me, probably uh, Troddlers. Uh, it's, it's a cute little game. Uh, it's a, a simple premise, um, but one that gradually builds up. You know, you're, you're not thrown in the deep end um, to kind of working out for yourself um, it's, it's kind of obvious what you need to do um, I also really like logical that's uh, that's something that I think you could probably spend an evening with just running through the puzzles uh, and you know seeing as it gradually becomes more and more complicated and you start pulling what little hair you left have left out um, I think probably the biggest disappointment for me is uh, gulp that's one where it's literally you you're giving everything on the first level and Lemmings never did that. Lemmings, it, it gave you one move to do, uh, one ability, and then you learnt it, and then you'd move on to the next level, and it would, you'd gradually be lowered into this very hot bath before it all became terribly mad. Um, <laughs> similarly, uh, Kiro's Quest, um, that one feels like something that maybe should have a bit more of an explainer behind it. Um, that first level where you've got the two screens, it's not immediately apparent what you need to do. Um, it, it tells you, you know, melt the, the boy in the ice or whatever, um, but the fact he's not there on the screen or they don't scroll across to show you him, you know, it's... Uh, this is one of the issues that I've, I've said before about um, going back to Amiga games, is that you, you don't have the box, you don't have the manual um, to look at and basically go, oh right, that's, oh, yeah, that's what you do. Um, so. You know, I think that's just the, the passage of time, really, has rendered that a bit tricky. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's little episode. Um, I've enjoyed making it. I've enjoyed playing some different games. Um, 
If you've got any comments um, or any suggestions for the channel, please do shout. Um, and here's to the next 50 episodes. And uh, then I can roll out a, a big celebration for the uh, 100th, which will probably be sometime in, probably be at some point when this, uh, this light doesn't just go out on me at random times. Thanks for watching. Cheers.